Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at a difficult algebraic fraction calculation. Now with algebraic fractions there's lots of different calculations you can have. You can have adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing and of course as well as that you could also have just simplifying an algebraic fraction. So there's absolutely loads and I will link all the appropriate videos in the description. So if you want to pause the video and have a go at this question feel free but otherwise I'm just going to show you how you can find them. Okay, so when you're on one of these videos, if you click into the description and you scroll down in the description, you'll see right at the top there, you've got a video with the five hardest topics on paper three. If you scroll down a little bit further, you can download my checklists and practice booklets for this exam. Just below that, you'll have the whole series, obviously at the moment, this is the first one coming out, so it's not quite filled in yet, but you'll have the whole series of questions that I'm gonna be uploading in the lead up to the exam. Just below that you have the series of exam revision videos. Obviously we're focusing on paper three now, so we're going to be looking at those paper three videos for foundation or higher. You can also find those in the playlists. So that's how we go about using this video, and right at the bottom you'll see that for some of them I'll put some timestamps in, but down the bottom there you have topics featured in this video. So I'll link all the appropriate videos for this topic or for whichever topic we're looking at right inside the video. So hopefully that's useful and helpful, we've got a lot to get through, so let's get started. Okay, so this question does have quite a lot of steps. Now what we can see from the question, we've got four take away, and then we have x plus three divided by this other algebraic fraction. Now when I'm looking at this question, there are a couple of things that stand out to me straight away. For starters, four is not written as a fraction. Obviously it wouldn't be, and neither is this. But we're gonna to wanna to approach them as fractions as we are doing a fraction calculation. So what I would probably do is straight away write them both over one so, so that, just so that I remember to apply some fraction rules when we get there, okay? So I'm gonna do that to start with. Now something else stands out to me as well, and that's that this quadratic here is not factorized. And when it comes to algebraic fractions, we want to factorize everything. And quite often within an, al within an algebraic fraction, you'll also have things like a difference of two squares that you might have to factorize. So for example, you might have something like x squared minus 25, which factorizes into two brackets, x plus five and x minus five. And there are obviously different variations of that as well. This one doesn't have one of those, so that's okay. But just a side note, because that's quite common on these questions. So to start off with here, I'm gonna to have to deal with what's in the bracket. So I'm gonna work out this bit to start with. So if we write that over here to the side, we've got x plus three over one. Now note that that x plus three is written in a bracket. Well, it doesn't have to be written in a bracket, so we could keep it in a bracket or reintroduce the bracket when we need to, but that's absolutely fine. We're doing a divide, so I'm going to flip the second fraction over and I'm going to multiply them. So I'm going to write that straight away. So times, and then I'm going to put the denominator on the top because we're flipping it over. So x minus 2. And the numerator there, I could write that on the bottom, but I know I need to factorise that. So I'm going to put that into double brackets to start with, just to save myself writing out too many steps. So both of them have an x at the start. It's a 6 at the end, so the only factors could be 1 and 6, or 2 and 3. And we're trying to make 5 in the middle. Now they're all pluses, so it has to be the plus 2 and the plus 3. And again, not forgetting, you can write those in either order. So we've just factorised it there. So if we write those on the bottom then, we have x plus 2 and x plus 3. Okay, so we need to go about actually multiplying these together. But something else now stands out to me as well. You'll see that we have the x plus three on the top of the left fraction and the x plus three on the bottom of the right fraction. Now you can multiply these together to start with if you want, or we can actually cross cancel them because everything on the numerators is all gonna be put together and everything on the denominators is gonna be put together. It's just like simplifying and canceling from the top and the bottom before we actually multiply. So I'm gonna cross those out because they've canceled out. And I'm just going to write what we have left. Just remember with a fraction though, when you do this, you need to remember because there's only an x plus 3 on that left fraction, that that will simplify down to 1, as we are just dividing the top and bottom by x plus 3. And x plus 3 divided by x plus 3 just equals 1. 
So what we actually have here is 1 over 1 multiplied by the x minus 2 over x plus 2. And that's really nice because we're just going to multiply the numerators. So 1 times x minus 2 is x minus 2. And 1 times x plus 2 is just x plus 2. And again, I've done something a little bit strange there because I've kept the bracket, but really I didn't need to. So I could get, I could get rid of that bracket, but you're not going to lose marks for leaving in brackets. So there we go. We've simplified what's in the big square brackets there. And now we have to deal with the 4 take away our answer. So I'm going to write that down. So 4 over 1, keeping it as a fraction, take away the x minus 2 over x plus 2. OK, so how do we deal when we're adding or taking away fractions? Well, we need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by this x plus 2. As there's only a 1 on the denominator on the left, that's going to make it x plus 2 on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to times the top by x plus 2. And I'm going to times the bottom by x plus 2 as well. So just creating an equivalent fraction where the denominator is x plus 2. Now if I do that, just need to be a little bit careful on the top because there is a 4 there. So that 4 is going to multiply both of them. I could actually write that as a single bracket or I could just go ahead and write 4x plus 8. But if you feel more confident writing 4 brackets x plus 2 and then expanding it, that's absolutely fine. On the bottom, we've got x plus 2. That's just 1 times x plus 2. So we're going to take away the x minus 2 over x plus 2. And now we have a common denominator. All I have to focus on is the numerator. So I need to do this very carefully as it is a takeaway. So we have 4x and we're going to take away x. So 4x take away 1x would just leave us with 3x. This next part is where I need to be extra careful because I've got plus 8 and we're taking away negative 2. So you need to be careful there because a lot of people are going to write the answer as 6. But when you're taking away a negative, hopefully we know that that's going to become plus 2. So I'm actually going to do 8 plus 2 here. So that's going to become plus 10. So our numerator is going to be 3x plus 10 and our denominator is going to stay the same and that's going to be x plus 2. And there we go, that is our final answer. Now the question says write it as a fraction in its simplest form and you must show your working. Well clearly we've shown our working. The only way that we could simplify this is if the top factorises. Now it doesn't factorise. But for example, maybe that that 3x would be a 4x, and that would mean the top and bottom might simplify, because you might be able to factorise. You, you could definitely factorise 2 out of that, and then the bracket might match the x plus 2 on the bottom. Now in this question it doesn't, it doesn't factorise, so that would be our final answer. It would just be 3x plus 10 over x plus 2. So I hope you found that useful and helpful. Again, I'm going to link all the videos that you need in the description. So if you found that useful, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Thank you.